What is going on Diablo 2 fans, Dobrunsky here and today I'm going to be showcasing the Maul Werebear Druid. This is a Lord of Destruction build video. It's been a while since I've played some original LOD content because I've been playing so much modded Diablo 2 but I thought it'd be cool to fill in some gaps for build videos on my channel basically for the anticipation of Diablo 2 Resurrected launching. So I do hope you guys enjoy this build video. Is it the best melee character? Not really but there's a lot of pros and cons like it's a lot of life, very tanky and great crowd control but it lacks raw damage and AoE. So it's an interesting build and it's fun to play. So I do hope you guys enjoy it. Quick reminder for those that don't know, I do stream twice a week on Twitch and I basically theory crafted the entire build on one of my live streams. So if you guys want to kind of partake in some of that live content, you can always hit me up with a follow. Link for my channel is of course in the description below. Twitch last to Runsky 125. Any follows would be very much appreciated. But guys, hope you enjoy this build video. Let's jump in. So like I said at the intro, there's some definite pros and cons associated with the Maul Werebear. I just want to spend a little bit of time kind of diving into some more detail about those. And the first major pro is that the build is extremely tanky. You can easily get more than six or 7,000 life with a really good inventory and then using Oak Sage as your summon spirit. And you also have summons that can absorb damage for you as well, like the summon Grizzly. So it's just a very, very tanky character. The second major pro is that the build probably has, out of all the melee builds in Diablo 2, the single best crowd control, especially when you use a rumored like Doom for Holy Freeze and Freeze on Struck. But in general, Shockwave and then just the stun length from Maul, it's just the best crowd control period. Monsters can't attack you or they're attacking really slow and especially when you couple that with a Reaper's Troll Mercenary, the Decrep proc, everything is just like underwater, it's not really doing damage to you. Just fantastic crowd control. But like any build in Diablo 2, there's some definite cons associated with the Maul Werebear. The first major one is that the build has zero AoE. Now, to be fair, almost any melee build in Diablo 2 doesn't have AoE with the exception of like the Whirlwind Barbarian or Tesladin, I guess, with the Holy Shock Ore or maybe a Kixin using Stormlash for static field proc. But in general, not many melee builds have AoE and definitely the Maul Werebear fits into that. The second major con is that the build definitely lacks in terms of raw damage, even with some of the very best inventory like shapeshifting plus lifers or max damage attack rating plus life GCs, breath of the dying, that kind of thing. You're still going to have less raw damage than again a Tesladin or a Zealer because a lot of the class mechanics restrict you from using some of the meta weapons like grief. Will not necessarily restrict you, they're just not really the best in slot choice. And then the third major con is that you cannot reposition your mercenary in shapeshifting form. So you're often kind of stuck using rune words like pride. They might be better than using Reaper's Toll because if you're running around in Chaos Sanctuary, the mercenary is likely miles behind you and you're not even benefiting from a Reaper's Toll decrep proc. It's just one of kind of the downsides. You cannot reposition your mercenary at all or your summons for that matter. So that's definitely another major con for the Maul Werebear. So first thing we'll take a look at is the attributes. Now I did sort of tweak the setup. It isn't max Vita. You don't really need like 6,000 life. That's a little bit overkill for PVM. So I have enough points into Vitality to have just over 4,000 life when I'm in shapeshifting form and have my CTA buff. So you can see 4,323 life. I have nothing into energy. Dexterity didn't put anything into. My attack rating is a little bit low. I mean, it's only 5,000 here. It does go up when I activate Maul when it gets to its higher kind of build up charge up but it is a little bit low, so I do use Demon Limb for a little bit of a pre-buff. Again, you could put some extra points into Dexterity if you wanted to. I chose to put some more points into Strength for more damage. You can see that I have 3,668 to 10,000 K. Again, that's before Maul is fully charged up. At its strongest, I have 15 K Maul damage. So again, single target, one swipe. It does have stun for 15 K max damage, but you can see how that is less damage than like spinning around dual grief for the Whirlwind Barbarian or, you know, single striking five hits really quickly with a Zealer or Paladin. It's just definitely a little bit low in terms of raw damage, but for my res spread, I have capped fire, 50 cold, 80 lightning, and 37 poison. So the poison is a little bit low. That does cause some issues doing wave two of Bale if I do get poisoned. You can just go back to town and heal up talking to an NPC. It's not a huge deal. Cold isn't that big a problem either because I do have a lot of cold absorbed from Ravenfrost, but yeah, that's basically a simple breakdown of the attributes. Now for the skill tree, things get a little bit interesting because you have a lot of leftover points once you've maxed out 
Werebear, Lycanthropy, and Maul. You can go a lot of extra points into Shockwave, more points into Summons. You could have two different spirits depending on playstyle if you're online. So it's a very interesting way to kind of tailor your build because you have a lot of leftover points. But for Elemental, nothing invested. Summoning, again, trying to be a little bit different. I have one hard point into Raven, one into Oak Sage, one into Summon Spirit Wolf. Then I completely maxed out Heart of the Wolverine. And then I have one hard point into Summon Grizzly, and then I completely maxed out Summon Dire Wolf. This might seem really weird, but Dire Wolf grants a life bonus to Summon Grizzly. So this Grizzly has 5,200 life before CTA buffs, so he almost never dies. I mean, he does occasionally, but it's just a way to get a little bit more extra tankiness out of one of the best single meat shield summons in the game. So I went that route. Again, you could invest your points differently. You could put 20 points into Oak Sage. If you're playing on Battle.net with different party members, you could toggle back and forth. Like if you're playing with another Druid, you could use Heart of Wolverine or vice versa. But again, this is just how I kind of broke down my skill points. And then for shapeshifting, one hard point into Werewolf and then it completely max Lycanthropy. Lycanthropy is just more life and more duration in shapeshifting form. So you definitely want to max this out. Then it completely maxed Werebear for more damage and defense. Completely maxed Maul because of every successive hit increases the damage. So again, when I was going over the attributes, and I said it was only 10k max damage Maul. As you successfully charge up Maul, it, the damage increase goes from 20% all the way up to 420%. So it's definitely important to sink as many points as you can into that to boost that charge up. And then for Shockwave, one hard point is almost 12 seconds stun length duration. So it's really good. You could put 20 hard points if you wanted to have like a 20 second duration. Again, that total duration is a little bit lower. It's I believe 25% in Hell Difficulty, that length gets reduced to, but you could put more points into Shockwave if you wanted more damage. You could go Hunger, although it's bugged. Every other hit basically misses, so I wouldn't use Hunger, but again, definitely different ways you can tell your setup, but that's how I chose to invest my skill points for this setup. Now, the gear is very cool because there's a lot of different sort of stuff you can use to optimize it. Different weapon choices, again, using Demon Limb if you want to get a little bit more attack rating. More Crushing Blow for boss killing at the end during some bail running. I'll show you guys some different weapon swaps, but the main weapon that I found to be kind of the best, in my opinion, is just this Breath of the Dying and a Great Poleaxe. Lots of increased attack speed because only weapon IS determines your breakpoints. More or less, there's some exceptions, but that's just an easy rule to follow. But this is just a great weapon. Lots of ED, dual leech, uh, attack rating and damage to the undead, your attributes, 30 tall attributes, uh, the poison nova school for style points. Just a lot of raw hitting damage. Some of the other weapons that I have used, Doom is a really cool choice. This is a super expensive weapon, but it does have a lot of cool attributes to it, like all skills. 45 increase attack speed, uh, the Holy Freeze Aura, definitely a cool weapon choice. And then there is also Rib Cracker. This is a really cool one to use if you want to kind of stack a little bit more Crushing Blow to get a quicker Bale kill. Again, you don't really want to have multiple of these because you can't switch between all of them. I'm just showing you some of the different weapons you can use. But for the rest of the setup, I have Jalal's with an Umrun just to help cap my res out. Uh, this is a great helmet. G-Face is good for more Deadly Strike if you're okay with losing four to shapeshifting skills, faster hit recovery, bonus to attack rating, strength, energy, bunch of res. I prefer to use Jalal's over that extra 15% deadly strike. Again, that's just me. For the amulet, I have High Lords, the best melee amulet, uh, your one doll skills and deadly strike based on character level. Boots are Gore Riders for again, more crushing blow and deadly strike. And Raven Frost for cannot be frozen. String of Ears for DR and life to only per hit. Fortitude for more damage. And then I have a dual leech, Nine strength quad res ring. And then of course I have laying a hands gloves uh, just for the increased attack speed, which is useless, but the 350% damage to demons and 50% fire res, just solid, probably the best melee gloves you can use. So on the offhand, I have CTA. This is a five, six, four CTA with a spirit just to boost the battle orders. And then for my inventory, I have a torch, 15, 15 druid torch, 19, 17, any charm, different assorted shape-shifting plus life skillers, a faster rum walk, and a couple plain ones. Now you could use max damage AR plus life GCs. I like using shapeshifting because you're boosting lycanthropy, you're boosting maul, you're boosting your werebear. So you're getting a lot more bang for your buck. Like yeah, you're getting your damage attack rating life, but you're getting duration in shapeshifting form. You're increasing the maul damage. You're increasing the attack rating for maul. You're increasing your overall damage in werebear form and your defense. So 
Shapeshifting Skillers are one of the few viable choices for a melee build, in my opinion. Like a Barbarian, you wouldn't really want to use a Combat Skiller, but for a Druid, Shapeshifting is a good choice to use as a GC. Then all of these small charms are just different assorted max damage, attack rating, plus life small charms to try and get the highest possible damage, plus life and attack rating that I can. And then my Mercenary, I'm just going with my sort of standard Chammed V-Gaze for DR and Cannot Be Frozen. Fortitude, e for more damage, and then I have here the Pride Rune Word. Depending on what I'm doing, like I'm going to show off a little bit of Chaos Sanctuary and then some Bail Running. For Chaos Sanctuary, I like using Pride because the Mercenary is often way behind me, so I get the benefit of the aura. But if I'm Bail Running, I think Reaper's Toll is a better choice because likely once you get down to Bail, he should be, you know, focusing on the waves. He won't kind of be wandering off. So that choice, Decrep to reduce monster damage, increase your damage by reducing the physical res and then slowing them down for crowd control. That is a really good option. Although I do think that Shapeshifting Druids, it's one of the very select few viable choices of the Rumored Pride. And I just wanted to kind of explain my reasoning for using this very expensive but arguably super useless rune word. So I'm going to try and do a two-way showcase of what this build is like. First, doing a Player's 1 Chaos Sanctuary run with a Pride Mercenary and then using the rune word Doom. And then I will alternate to doing some Bail Runs and then I will throw in Breath of the Dying, Rib Cracker, and then Reaper's Toll Mercenary. Just so you can kind of see a little bit of different taste for your kind of like most viable options for this build. So the first thing you're going to do is Battle Orders, Battle Command, obviously. Recast your summons, Battle Orders, Battle Command them again to give them another level. And then if you're using Breath of the Dying, Shapeshift on your offhand. If you're using Doom, it doesn't matter because Doom has two dull skills. CTA, Spirits, three dull skills. So you get a slightly higher Shapeshift on the offhand, but definitely with Breath of the Dying, you want to Shapeshift on the offhand. Transform into Bear. And it's really simple. This is the Doom setup here with the uh, Pride Mercenary, you're basically just Shockwave, go in and just maul stuff, everything will be stunned, and then just occasionally recast your Shockwave, so. Shockwave doesn't work on champions with boss packs, but does on everything else. You just send that Shockwave in, everything can't move. And whatever monster you're actually physically striking and attacking because of that freeze on target from the cham room in the room where doom can't actually attack it's just sitting there immobile it's kind of amusing actually but now we'll take on infector we'll send off a few shockwaves into the pack and just work away slowly one by one maul them all again this is players one so it's a little slow but Lack of AoE really does hurt the build. Not quite your Zealer or Woolen Barb, but still does damage. Now you do periodically want to like go back to your Druid form, recast your Battle Lords of Battle Command, and then shapeshift back again because you can't cast that stuff when you're in shapeshifting form. It's kind of one of the annoyances of using CTA as a shapeshifter. But now we'll take on Desace. I'll switch to Breath of the Dying for. Uh, Vizier and Diablo. I might kind of do, if I can get a single monster here, I might switch to a regular attack just to show you guys what the freeze on target is like. It's pretty funny. Okay, so we'll just go to regular attack. I use dead anyways. But the freeze actually stops him from moving, which is really amusing. There's not too many rumors that have cham and a weapon. Dead. I'll switch to Breath of the Dying. The damage difference, so it's 13, it's, well, 1300 to 16k with uh, Doom, and then you switch to Breath of the Dying, 22k. So it is a pretty big, substantial increase in damage, of course, at the expense of the crowd control from Doom. Now, Doom is not the best rumored, but uh, just wanted to try something different in this video. That is quite a bit of damage. 22k when you're fully charged up. Yeah, Decrep is super killer for any melee build. And if you really wanted to, you could go crazy and go max strength. I'm sure you could get that number even higher. If you're comfortable walking around with like 2k life, but...
Battle Boss Vizier. Again, D Shape Shift, Druid Form, Battle Lords, Battle Command. Shape Shift again, and then switch to your main hand. Not even death Shockwave doesn't do anything against Diablo, so you just kind of maul hit him. I only have 15% crushing blow, so that's. You can definitely speed up the kill with like Ribcracker if you wanted to switch it out just for boss hunting, but that's kind of an idea of Breath of the Dying versus using the Rumored Doom. So finally, we'll wrap everything up doing the bail run. So I'm going to set the player's difficulty to eight. Now this is Breath of the Dying with a Reaper's Tool Mercenary. So Ethereal Reaper's Tool with Ruby Jewel Fervor. The gear setup is the same. And then I will throw in uh, Ribcracker for the final bail kill just to speed things up a little bit. But we're set, ready to go. Player's eight difficulty. Kind of get to see how effective Shockwave is. Stun the little wave. Earth rocks to prep. The only thing that's pretty brutal is you getting to prep yourself. So usually the first, like that was players eight, not the fastest, but what I like to do is wave four and five, I'll pull them down so that I don't get cursed. Because I get slowed down by half, my damage gets decreased by half. Like fails the crap is super crippling to enemy mode, so. But again, this is players eight. And the lack of AoE is pretty apparent. I'm gonna go down to players three for the final final wave, just because it's very slow. Two's out of the way. And that poison's pretty rough because I don't have cat poison res. But that decrep and mall stun, that's pretty good. The crack control something's mad at burning me. Can't wait to that for that to be fixed in uh Diablo 2 resurrected. Okay, so my CTA is worn off, so I'm going to come down here, rebuff it frigid anyways. Now without having myself decrept, you'll see that this wave kill goes pretty quickly. Again, this is player's 8. Just kind of shows you how much that 50% damage penalty when you're getting decrepit slows you down because this That's a pretty quick wave four for a melee build. I think so anyways. Okay, one guy left. We'll do the same idea, but we're gonna go down to players three just because Players eight, the final wave is pretty slow. Especially if we get like stone skin lister, get a bad spawn. So pull them down, same idea. Bunch of shockwaves, mercenaries just being stupid. It's really cool how with Maul and Shockwave I can completely immobilize the wave. And then we'll throw on Ribcracker just to get that extra crushing blow. So we have 50 crushing blow plus the 15 on here, 65 total, just makes the bail kill a little bit quicker. And this is player's three bail. I will miss quite a few hits because I don't have the best attack rating, but definitely want to try and stack that crushing blow as much as you can. And then if the mercenary can get a hit off, the combination of cool damage for me attacking and decrep will stop uh, from teleporting. That's if my Merc can get a hit off. There we go. One side to Krep goes, he's super slow. Ok, 
Carol's mine for a build video. And I do miss a lot. The Demon Lame Enchant buff box, which actually didn't showcase, it should have. That will help give you a little bit more attack rate, and you could put more points into Dexterity. But I think I only have like a 60% chance that it fails, so it's a little... Things are a little rough. Just about done. No fancy drops for the build video. Well guys, there you have it. That wraps up today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of the Maul Werebear build. Again, it's fun, niche, it does have some pros and cons, but I do think it's worthwhile trying if you're looking for something different. I mean, if you're just your meta guy, this won't be the build for you, but I do think the Maul Werebear is a fun character to play. But as always, if you guys could throw a like on this video, share it, and even consider subscribing if you're new to my channel. I post new weekly content on YouTube. I do stream twice a week on Twitch, so a follow on Twitch or sub on YouTube would be amazing. Other than that, guys, hope you have a fan frickin' day, and I'll catch you on my next video or live stream. Peace out.